Welcome to the final episode of series 48, everyone. This is a fun, I've been having a lot of fun with this series. So Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for people to hear some of the discussion that we had because these designer episodes are always just like chef kiss. So good. Mm -hmm. Um, But before all of that, before we can let people hear the great quality content, announcements. Announcements. Let's not Uh, make a song for that too. No. (laughs) (laughs) So there is a bundle that you should check out on itch.io. It is in the final stretches of its uh, time on itch.io, I guess. Yes, I don't know. It's, 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 it's run, I believe it's is what run. you would call yeah, it. There maybe. you go. He, Campaign. Exactly. Campaign. I don't know. It's been there. Is It started off with a month and a couple days on there, and it's running to the end as of the release of this episode. So uh, this is the TTRPG bundle for Trans Rights Texas. Uh, there are almost 500 items included in this bundle, uh, including my very own game, our final gathering, the dreaded reflections of the immortal soul, which is a mouthful, <laughs> uh, but it's a fun game. Um, we covered that uh, on our Patreon exclusive episode if you want to hear what it's about. Uh, but this bundle is only $5 minimum. Uh, it's meant to provide funds to trans advocacy groups in Texas in light of uh, recent policies enacted by the governor, which among other things, seeks to prosecute parents who provide gender affirming health care to their kids as child abusers. And that is super gross. So, yeah, um, <laughs> and just not science. No. Yeah, a- a- absolutely. I mean, so, among other things, not science. <laughs> right. Uh, so this legislation legislation is uh, both dangerous uh, directly to the families affected, but also uh, indirectly as it sets of really bad precedents for other states to do similar things and and that kind of sucks. Uh, So this bundle helps advocates work with families directly impacted and to fight against these dangerous and discriminatory policies. Mm -hmm. Um, We encourage you to give to that cause first um, because it, they they need it. Um, Mm -hmm. If you have something left over um, and you're looking for something to do with that money, um, our network does have a Patreon that helps our show and all the other shows on the network. It is at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. It does get you bonus episodes for the various shows on the network at the $5 and up level. Mm-hmm. Um, and other levels above that, I think the 15 a month level, um, you get a free RPG every month. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have a new bonus episode coming up where I create characters with my kids for a game called Weird Scouts that mm-hmm. focuses on kids playing uh, magical scouts in a uh, like a magical forest setting. Yeah. Um, it's very cute. It's a lot of fun. Um, we had a great time recording. Nate was <laughs> peak Nate. <laughs> yep. um, and it's it's fun because we did that one a few years ago. And so it's uh, interesting to hear how much they've grown up since we last Absolutely. did one too. Mm-hmm. Um, it, the audio quality is not great. I was using my old microphone and it did betray me a little bit. But Ryan, being the editing genius that he is, has mostly <laughs> fixed it up. So um, it's not up to our usual standards, but it is also three of us in a closet around a microphone. So yeah. What can you, what can you do? What can you do? (laughs) (laughs) Absolutely. Um, Another cool thing that we've got going on right now is we just finished designs for some t-shirts that we're going to be adding to the One Shot Network T-Public store sometime soon. Um, It's not only t-shirts, you can get stickers, mugs, uh, posters. Posters, uh, giant flags to hang. uh, Yeah, I think they even do canvas prints as well. Mm -hmm. It's it's wild how many things you can do on that. Um, yeah, but Amelia, phone cases, I think, depending on what kind yeah, of phone Yeah, there's you some have. phone cases, yep. Yeah. Um, so Amelia's been having a lot of fun making designs, and we've been having quite a good laugh uh, about some of our favorite in, in inside jokes that we've got going on. Yep. Yeah, that's what they um, are. I mean, there's a couple from episodes, but a lot of it is, like, inside jokes right now, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and we've been posting some previews on our Discord, so if you wanted to check those out, you could go to discord.characterpatientcast.com uh, and join us and comment and maybe mm-hmm. shape the future of t-shirts uh yeah should we and- tell people like what the what the first design is yeah Can what's the first design? announce it on the show here i invented a logo for our sims 4 esports <laughs> league <laughs> <laughs> so uh if you go to our episodes about micro games um mm-hmm. it is uh episode three of that series i don't remember the series number 28 or no that seems no, too it's low. like 30, 30 something 30 it's something? in there i don't it's know micro, I don't micro rpgs with us yeah it's micro rpgs um but we created a sims 4 esports league um mm-hmm. and so i did i did make a shirt for that league 
Um, it looks very official. It does. I'm really excited about it to have a shirt for, <laughs> <laughs> for some sport esports. So, uh-huh. um, but I've been working on a couple other ones that are a little more like uh, show centric and then some that are from specific series. So mm. I'm excited to get them out into the world. I've been having fun playing with, with designs. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and we'll put a link in the show notes uh, to the network store so you can keep an eye out for the new designs. It's going to take a little while because uh, folks on the network are uh, busy, uh, just like almost everybody else in life. Yep. Uh, so they'll get there when they get there. Yeah, hopefully around the end of the month sometime. Um, but we're excited. I'm going to buy mm-hmm. one right away. Uh, Absolutely. Nate has already asked for one, too. So. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I noted last time that I really want to make some playlists for some of our series. I recently posted on Twitter and Instagram and our Discord also um, Mm -hmm. about the one I made for our Christmas Belonging series. It is late for Christmas and it is still kind of winter-ish. It was snowing here yesterday a little bit. Um, There actually aren't any Christmas songs on there, though, so it's mostly kind of winter feels. Yeah. Yeah. We asked recently on Twitter, um, but we would also like to hear from people uh, what you would like a playlist for and what kind of themes and vibes you think we should put in there. And also um, if there are any songs that you think absolutely need to be in there. Yeah. Um, I also just thought of another thing that I was going to say in these announcements. Um, We would like to do another Q&A mailbag episode at some point. Um, We did one for our one year anniversary. Mm -hmm. We are creeping up on our four year anniversary. Um, So we would really like to do another one. We will put a Google form out on Twitter and our discord um, and I don't know other places. We'll put a link to one in these show notes, too. Um, Yeah. But uh, if you have questions that you'd like to ask us and you'd like us to answer, we would like to do a fun little bonus episode at some point. Um, Absolutely. Um, and Q&A. I think we'll we'll probably release that as part of our Series 50 celebration extravaganza, yes. which is coming up in May. Yeah. Uh, so so really, yeah, get us get us your questions. Mm-hmm. Uh, and and goodness gracious, uh, we will answer them to the yeah. best of our ability. Uh, it can be questions about us, questions about games, questions about character creation, questions about world building questions about memes whatever yes uh, anything you've heard address. on the show or want to hear on the show or yep. any of that um we would Abs- love to answer absolutely them. uh ask ask us anything um and if it's appropriate we will uh answer that question yeah yeah um wonderful you know anything about four years making a podcast four years later somehow yeah. still <laughs> <laughs> we did say in the very beginning that we're like we have hundreds of ideas and things that could go on forever so like we're only at 50 yeah yeah so we we got a ways to go yeah we got we got time <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of time we have a tiktok page now <laughs> see what i did there <laughs> i love that that was good good segue <laughs> nice nice uh, we are currently only hosting our teasers for upcoming episodes. Uh, we're not sure if we're going to use it for anything else. We might, we may not. We have no idea. We're, yeah. we're still figuring out what we know and what we uh, think we know. We're still learning uh, about internet. <laughs> yeah, we're still learning about internet stuff like TikToks and the, the Tiki Takis. So uh, you can follow us at Character Creation Cast, all one word, on TikTok uh, and, and like our stuff and, and share it, I guess. I, I don't know how TikTok works, but... Uh, yeah. whatever whatever you can do to throw the algorithm out there for other folks to see our stuff that'd be awesome yeah um, I've been going and, back and listening to older episodes too so I'm hoping that we'll put some like um, not teasers at this point but like little clips right. from older episodes too in there um, yeah absolutely um, I've, I've been really enjoying putting together the teasers for upcoming episodes and it's it's a really easy process for me at this point mm-hmm. so we'll probably just pull like snippets of uh, of audio here and there and uh, throw them up on Twitter and TikTok and and uh, just kind of give a little taste of uh, some of our older stuff. So if you if you've been reluctant to listen to some of these series just because it's not a game that you were enjoying, uh, you could get a nice little snippet of some of the the wisdom or hilarity uh, that ensues within the episodes, um, because there's a lot of gems that are hidden throughout all yeah. of our series. That's not just about the game that we're covering. Um, so, well, and I have to say, like, there are times where, you know, we we sit down to do a game because we're like, you know, it's the it's coming up or, you know, it's something that we think that our listeners would really enjoy or something. But like, it's not always my jam um, mm-hmm. because, you know, not everything's for everyone. Um, and sometimes we'll sit down to do these games. And by the end of a series, I'm like, 
oh, actually, like, uh-huh. why, why did I not like this game? Like, why was I not into this? Um, mm-hmm. So, you know, obviously not everybody has to listen to everything. And it's a thing that I love about our show. It's really easy to kind of come in and out too. Mm-hmm. Um, but definitely the teasers, I think, help give people a little idea of, you know, maybe this will be fun, even if it's not my kind of game. Yeah. Oh. And, and uh, if we're going to do more than that on TikTok, uh, more than more than just the teasers, uh, we'll let you know. But also feel free to suggest stuff at us. And, yeah. And, Tell and us maybe... what people do on TikTok. I don't yeah. want to dive too deep into it because I just like I I just don't trust my ADHD. Like I will get sucked in. So like <laughs> do I don't, not. you know, it's not like for me, it's not like a level of like, nah, I, yeah. I don't understand how to enter. It's just like, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. Um. <laughs> So, you know, if there's things that I should know, like, you know, mm-hmm. tell me, tell me the memes. Ten hours later. Right. Well, that's what it would be. TikTok. It's like, I don't, I don't want to do that. Uh, no. I tell my sister to just send me ones that she thinks I would like. And that's what she does. So that's where I yep. get my, get my TikTok from. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Secondhand TikToks. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay. Final announcement. I swear. Uh, If you didn't check out our bonus character creation spotlight episode from last week for Yazeba's Bed and Breakfast, uh, we got into some really fantastic discussion. Uh, We learned about that phenomenal game, uh, which is crowdfunding right now. It is, it's, it really hit on some fun topics about character creation Mm. and about what we consider to be RPGs, what we count as role playing. It got really in depth for one of our spotlight series. I love that. Um, We we got into the weeds of some really fantastic conversation. It was Uh, stuff that like I've always wanted to ask people and talk about and like just doesn't come up or we haven't really had room for. And this was the perfect game to really dig my dig my hands in the dirt of some of those yeah, things so i yeah. know i went way off script on that one but it was a great uh, and, discussion yeah and jay and lily were fantastic guests yes. and yes. and if you haven't listened uh, absolutely go check it out because uh uh as an episode by itself uh it's it's just fantastic so mm-hmm. um I, yes. I hope you enjoy if you haven't heard it and if you had i hope you had enjoyed it yeah um it is crowdfunding right now on indiegogo just to like point that out, not on Kickstarter, it's on mm-hmm. Indiegogo. Um, so we'll have a link in the show notes and please check it out. It's a really cool concept for a game doing things that um, a lot of games are not doing right now, but in a really fun, interesting, uh, very accessible way. So. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, and I promise that's it We for the <laughs> announcements today. Um, you know, stick around after the show for the call to action, uh, as well as our ever growing outtakes. Um, In the meantime, enjoy the show. to our discussion episode. Last time we finished our session zero for Kids on Brooms. This episode, we are discussing the character creation process. We are thrilled to welcome back Doug Lewandowski and Jonathan Gilmore. Would you like to reintroduce yourselves to everyone um, and tell us a little bit about the characters you made with us? <laughs> sure thing. Uh, I'm Doug Lewandowski. Uh, I'm excited to still be here. Uh, yes. Be back. <laughs> Continue being here. <laughs> Continue my being here. Uh, I made Garrison Gar uh, Wilbur Thrum the uh, Fourth, yes. who was a haughty <laughs> descendant, um, junior at uh, Poof, and um, the prestigious <laughs> order of Fantasticism. Uh, Ryan forgot we named it that. <laughs> <laughs> In our very serious game, GM'd by Greg, um, and. Uh, yeah, a, a guy who's willing to help mermaids if they're cute enough. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's what he says. That's what he says. That's what he says. Gar yeah. sounds problematic. Gar he's, got a, he's got a heart under there. He I, I don't even think he admits not. it. <laughs> no. Gar is, no. A, Gar is a scumbag. Um, oh, no. I would not have made that character if I was actually going to play him. <laughs> yes. Well, I, good my, news. My rule is I don't play evil characters. So. Yep. 
Oh, I do not have. Well, you one. know, <laughs> uh, we got fan fiction coming up, so so we'll see kind of okay. how that may go if maybe we actually you'll did play have, these. Have like a nice maybe. redemption arc, you know? Yeah, maybe. Okay. Maybe there's room for maybe there's room for love. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Sure. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jonathan. How about yourself? Uh, yeah, I'm Jonathan Yomler. Uh, I'm a game designer, and I created Jimmy Tinglebottom. <laughs> Uh, it was a funny <laughs> klutz. Um, he is cursed with a curse that only makes his luck work in its stream. So either very, very good or very, very bad things happen. Never middle of the road. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's a lot of uh, hidden conflicts with the other players. I uh, am the reason one of the other players is cursed as well. Mm. And uh, I want to mention all the horrible things in my school bag because we didn't really talk about that. No. Oh, um, Oh, yeah. So my, my school bag is full of marbles, uh, bananas, bottles of oil uh, that I use to oil my unicycle that I ride all the time. Right. Uh, <laughs> why? Juggling Jimmy, pins. Why? Do you have any turtle shells in there, too? Like... No turtle shells. <laughs> okay. Just checking. Uh, a yo-yo, a slingshot, and a, a fushigi ball that is a, a magical artifact. An orb of protection, as we mm-hmm. found out. Mm-hmm. Yes. yes. Yeah. That's amazing. Yes, yeah, so all wow. those things in my school bag constantly cause very bad situations or very good ones. <laughs> right. <laughs> like the marbles just fall out all the time. Carrying those? Yeah. Or? No, no, I got to have my marbles. Yeah, like what yeah, if you need them, right? That's fine. What if it like challenges you to a battle? <laughs> That's yeah. right. You never know when it's going to come up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Ryan, can you tell us about your character? <laughs> yeah, um, so I created Elvira Whispershanks. Uh, she's the haunted survivor. Uh, she was uh, part of a magical girl troop that was, uh, uh, they, they had an encounter, uh, unfortunately, with the brunt of Elvira's curse that eventually disappeared the rest of the group, leaving only Elvira behind. And and shortly after then, uh, uh, her curse got intertwined with uh, with uh, Amy Catherine's uh, character, Amy Catherine, and goodness, uh, been kind of best friends probably before the curse. I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, I think and so. And then and then kind of uh, we we all went to this school together to try to get a better handle on. Uh, at least my powers, and and I think maybe, uh, I think Amy Catherine just came along as well. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, uh, it's goodness. It there's a lot there. There's a lot going on there. Uh, yeah. Oh, and she she's constantly fighting off like life or death forces that only mm. herself and Amy Catherine can can see. <laughs> yes. So it just looks like she's kind of dancing in the middle of nowhere. Uh, off and on just a small little quirk of uh knowing elvira <laughs> <laughs> life or death situation is just a small quirk it's fine it's just a cute fun thing that she does i know <laughs> she's adorable she flips over people randomly mm-hmm. how about yourself amelia uh well i made amy Catherine boyd um the reliable bestie uh amy Catherine is perpetually second place to Elvira. Um, She has the same curse and kind of followed Elvira to this school thinking, you know, she's already lost so many people. She can't lose anybody else. Um, I should definitely go with her. It's probably not because I'm in love with her. I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Okay, maybe a little bit it is. Um, And now she's sort of battling and grappling with the fact that like, She thinks she probably is smart enough to figure out how to break this curse, but everybody is so focused on Elvira and her need to, like, save her magical girl team that nobody's really, uh, nobody really cares what Amy Catherine has to say about the whole thing. So, Mm -hmm. um. Except except for Elvira. Maybe. And and maybe Gar a little bit. Maybe Gar a little bit, yeah. (laughs) Um, so, yeah, just kind of, um trying to like maybe be first place once in a while yeah but not at um 
whatever the, the game that we made up is. I forgot what we called it. Ready, set, serve. Ready, Ready set, set, serve. serve. Yes. Oh, we, yes. Because we are perpetually in second place. Maybe that is the place where Amy Catherine can finally shine. I know. <laughs> it's the it's the uh, premier volleyball cooking show competition of the wizarding world. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And our school's uh, never won. No, so we're, maybe, we have maybe come so Amy close. Catherine can like bring them to the championship. I know. Seriously. Finally be <laughs> finally be on top. Oh. Uh and that's not even to mention our principal, uh Meredith Bleep Lorp. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you have not listened to the character creation episodes, uh, what are you doing? Uh, yeah, go why? Listen to what? <laughs> uh, but yeah, we okay. Yeah, it's, yes, the it's, automaton it's a wonderful... who like lost her soul and had it replaced. Uh, put, put that... uh, potentially, uh, so Meredith's soul got put into the automaton and then potentially got replaced with an imposter. Right. That's right. a rumor. That's we a don't rumor. know if that's true. That's that can't a rumor. Be true. Um, and we haven't even touched on the whole litigation situation with the Mer people. Oh, you yeah. The, where the school, the island that the school is on got dropped oh into the God. middle of Lake Erie. We were only recording for two hours. We did so much. <laughs> we, we, we wrought so much havoc in two short hours. <laughs> Look at how it's much gain. Kids on brooms, packs into such a small right. time frame. It's I know. true. <laughs> it's very true. What horror. <laughs> uh, well, let's go ahead and dive right into a segment that we are calling D20 for your thoughts. D20 for your thoughts. So in this segment, we talk to our guests about their thoughts on the character creation process as it relates to the system, uh, as it relates to other games. And we also like to get to know you as people. So we always start with the most cliche question in role-playing podcasts. How did you start in RPGs? John, you want to start? Uh, sure. So, um, you know, I grew up in a really, really small town and couldn't find anybody to play D&D with. Um, so I just read D&D books. And then um, once I moved to Ohio and started making some more gaming friends, I got into a, a D&D group which I think we met for about a year maybe, and then it kind of fell apart because of scheduling conflicts. As it does. Yeah. And as is tradition. <laughs> as is Pretty the good. curse and blessing of mm-hmm. role playing uh-huh. games. Um, and then I kind of discovered, uh, I always really struggled with being a GM because I felt like I had to create everything ahead of time. Mm. Um, I never felt like I could run a game if I didn't know every little thing. So then I discovered... Uh, you know apocalypse powered um systems and like Mm -hmm. the zero prep gming and kind of refell in love with role-playing games yeah those those games have been such a blessing Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah huge inspiration yeah Yeah. definitely yeah yeah a much lower barrier to entry i think for a lot of people to to prep for that because i always feel the same way when i go to like run a game it's like i gotta know everything all the time mm-hmm. and then like having games where it's like no you, yeah. you don't and you you can't it's like oh okay yeah. mm-hmm. all right compared to heroes unlimited where to make a villain you literally have to make a full character <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> wow mm-hmm. yep. yeah like i i thought i had to have like the entire map of the town made and like i didn't know that i could just like fill stuff in and leave blanks and that was such a big revelation to me like if they say is there a blacksmith in, in town? And just say, yes, it's over here and then draw it on the map. Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Absolutely. I got started playing second edition D and D in sixth grade, seventh grade, uh, with some people from my boy scout troop, mm-hmm. um, which is maybe the most cliched way to get into role playing <laughs> games ever. <laughs> That's uh, how I learned magic. The gathering was boy yep. scouts. Yep. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, um, Played that for a little while, was really, really, really into it, and then stopped playing for a while, and then sort of gradually fell back into it uh, as I was starting to get back into board games in uh, in my 30s, mm-hmm. and have never looked back. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> what made both of you make that jump from, I'm a player, I'm a GM, to... I need to make my own game. I know like a lot of us kind of like homebrew things and sort of like, 
you know, it's a slippery slope. <laughs> yeah. too. Um, but I know for some people, it's like there's a moment of like, I need this game to exist. Mm. Yeah, I was homebrewing stuff, you know, back in seventh, eighth grade. Um, yeah. And you know, they, they were bad, right? They were unplayable. But <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. <laughs> but I thought they were awesome. Um, I don't think anything I did in like seventh or eighth grade, I look back on him <laughs> like that was peak content. <laughs> yeah, right. right. Um, well, what about my novel? Uh, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, and then the jump sort of started happening with, uh, I was designing board games and stuff um, and realized that I was just way more interested in the narrative side of things than I was in the, mm. you know, the sort of like mechanical design side of things. You know, I like mechanics, but right. um, the the story always interested me way more in getting people to tell an interesting story. It's something I was trying to do with board games and realize it's just better to do it with yeah. role-playing games. Mm. Yeah, there's a lot more room for that narrative. Yeah. And, and it's just, it's open. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about you, John? Did you have like a, a moment or was it the same kind of slow, slow decline? Into <laughs> um, it was kind of a slow decline. So in um, high school, I also, uh, you know, I couldn't find people to play RPGs with. So I was like, I'm just going to make my own RPGs. Mm -hmm. um, and I spent like a year writing like a Final Fantasy VII uh, RPG that was just utter garbage. Mm -hmm. um, I wonder how many of those there are out there because I feel like you're not the first person to say that it was Final Fantasy VII that was like the game that they were. I wonder how oh, many yeah. how many people have Final Fantasy VII RPGs. Oh, I, th I think a lot. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah, because I I grew up playing like video role playing games, so I was like, I'm right. gonna turn this into pen and paper. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and then yeah, kind of similar to Doug, like I'd been designing um board games for a long time, and uh, Dead of Winter, which is my more most popular one. Um, really borrowed a lot of my love of RPGs in it, um, with like the you know narratively driven and um, you know players making decisions based on like their own morality and their characters rather than mechanics. Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. so I, I you know I really love that, and um, I had dabbled. I actually have an RPG that I've never released that I designed before Kids on Bites. Um, that I should revisit at some point. Um, but then when the opportunity came up to do this with Doug, like I jumped at it. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I think that was the same, the same like kind of origin story that Ryan has. It's just like, oh, I played RPG video games and then uh, it was like, yeah. oh, also you can do them not video games. Mm -hmm. Yep, <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. Um, so what do you two look for in a system as far as character creation goes? Like what sort of pieces need to be there for great characters to happen? For great characters to happen, I think there have to be things that surprise the player about their character. Ooh. Um, you know, like some of the questions where, like, not to flex too hard on this, but I, I think we do a pretty good job with character creation in here, right? That yeah, having some of those questions pop in there where you're like, oh, I don't know if my, oh, yeah, my character would do that. Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there were a couple of moments as you were going through those questions yeah. that you were like, well, you know, like, what have you stolen from? So, and it was like, well, I wouldn't. Well, hmm. Well, I guess in this situation, I might. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The things that like really made me kind of question, like, what, what, under what circumstances would I do those things? Yeah. Uh, especially the one about me trying to get your character expelled. Uh, yes yeah that one i was like would you like i was waiting like, for you to say like re-roll it i won't go with this mm -hmm. um and you were like no actually i think let's lead into this right yeah right because yeah. i think we're we're generally inclined to play some idealized version of ourselves in role-playing games mm -hmm. for sure um, and using character creation to break us out of that either to make them not idealized or to make them so different from ourselves um you know, it's sort of like learning by play about the character. I think mm -hmm. that's one of the big things for me and, and simplicity, right? That I, one of my goals in role-playing games that uh, I've learned just so, so much from John about is like just getting the mechanics to get out of the way mm. of the playing. Mm -hmm. um, and the more you can do that, I think the more you let people le lean into the, the mimicry aspect of it where you're embodying this other character. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I 
green and like it really needs to be about those like personal connections like the thing i used to do um in like shadow run or D D is like i would write down secrets for every character that connected them to another character every game because mm -hmm. the more you preload that you know i really like it and then you know powered by apocalypse kind of has like the character creation questions on the character sheet yeah um you know, and we just wanted to really build on that and try to make it like this robust thing of its own that isn't necessarily like you do have the trope questions, um, you know, mm -hmm. that can go with your specific thing. But like having those really general questions and just add so many mm -hmm. twists before you even play like you, you feel like you're jumping in media res into this living world rather than mm -hmm. like you find yourself at a tavern and right. you all know uh, each other. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, I like games that kind of ask those sort of questions and force you to think about those. I know that my my favorite role playing game for a long time, still like a little bit, has a warm place in my heart, was the fourth edition of the Legend of the Five Rings game, which has the game of 20 questions in there. And after you make your character, you go through and there's 20 questions. And the last one is, how will your character die? Mm. And oh, wow. I just really always liked answering that question of like mm -hmm. okay how how do i envision this going like it, you know it may not go that way in a game but like you know now that i have picked out all of these flaws and these you know done all of these other things like what what is the culmination of those things and just like as an interesting thought exercise was always really fun for me mm -hmm. um and i i like the way that more and more games are translating some of that into character creation and then um adding it between characters too of like mm -hmm. let's okay let's assume this is complicated and bad stuff's going to happen now what yep yeah and i, I do love the uh those relationship questions uh yeah. when when games include those because they they add such a nice dynamic um that you you don't get from you know a quote-unquote more traditional uh game where you're just mm -hmm. creating your characters in a bubble Yes. And I think they give GM so much more to work with because now mm -hmm. we've just like put all of these things on the table and there's all these extra strings to pull on. Mm -hmm. And we've also spent a lot of time laying out. These are the things that I want to play with. Like these are, are mm -hmm. the concepts that I want to engage with. And I yeah. have handed them to you on a platter and said, here, go for it. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. you know, there's so much more there than just like, I am strong. I am smart. I have two axes. And, you know, <laughs> like, there's just a lot more there. Uh huh. Yeah. In, in the design process, credit where credit is due, uh, our friend Jay Treat was great at like pushing us to get better and better and better questions in there. Um, mm -hmm. So, major credit to Jay. Yes. Yeah. Like, the, they're fantastic questions. They are so good. <laughs> they're really good. <laughs> Um, I had I had uh, an experience recently. We I, I have never played any of the kids on uh, systems in the past, and um, I, I recently started up a game with somebody where we were playing a different game, uh, Symbarum, a uh, very dark and gritty fantasy setting, but it doesn't have any of that like relationship building stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, so the GM pulled in. The questions, the relationship questions, and the world building questions from Kids on Bikes. Oh, cool! And utilize that to build a, a relationship web. And once that mm -hmm. relationship web was set, goodness, uh, we had this like really rich uh, interactions between all the characters that was uh, would have been missing otherwise. We would have had to find all of that out in play, and and I guarantee it would not have come up that same way. Mm. No, and I, I have to say, as as somebody who's the eternal player and like the never GM, because I don't like I don't like running games, mm -hmm. um, I feel a lot more confident going into a game, having done these kinds of relationship questions, because I already have a basis of what these interactions should be like and what kind of um, relationships I'm trying to role play. Mm -hmm. I already mm -hmm. know going into this game that Ryan is going to be my best friend and that mm -hmm. Gar and I are going to have like this weird thing happening. <laughs> and, you know, like, so I am, I'm already comfortable that like when there's downtime or sort of a lull in like, you know, the mechanical things happening, I can lean into that without feeling awkward. Like I already know that we've set this up and we're all okay with it and we're good. Mm -hmm. um, 
And it, it doesn't feel that way in a lot of games. A lot of games, it's like, okay, well, I don't really know you and you don't really know me. So I guess we'll just stand here and I don't like, or awkwardly suddenly pretend we're best friends and have known each other for months. Yeah. You know, mm-hmm. um, I just feel a lot more prepared going into a game when it has stuff like that. Leading questions are so good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, uh, it almost sounds like we've been uh, answering the next question even. Yeah. A little bit here. Um, yeah, so our next question is, how do you think that character creation in this system stacks up against other games? In particular, I always like to ask, like, are there things that you felt like you had to have to make this a good, like, character creation process when you were writing a game? Like, this needs to be here. Or things that you were like, we're we're definitely not doing that. Like, we're definitely not, uh, you know, like, rolling 3d6. Yeah. (laughs) No Thacko, yeah. You're right. <laughs> <laughs> I think one of the things that we were big on when we were working on this was trying to streamline things, right? That yeah. not overwhelming people with choice, um, that limiting your options can actually, I think, breed creativity for people. Um, and right. So that was something right. that we were definitely working on with this. As far as like how it stacks up against other systems that... Uh, I like it. Yeah. Uh, it, like I tell people on the show all the time, like go for it. Like you made this game, you put it out into the right. world, like have the courage of your convictions. <laughs> sure. I don't think you would have put it out if it wasn't a good game. It's right. a good game. Right. And we've yeah. done some revisions, you know, to stuff over time. Um, you sure. know, there was one question in the original kids on bikes that it was a little bit problematic. And, you know, I sort of wish we edited that out, but you know, as we've gone, we've, I think, fine tuned the, the creation process and all that sort of stuff. Um, so I'm, I'm really happy with it. And I think if there were anything that we said, oh, it'd be cool if we could, we would add it. Um, right. Mm-hmm. So. Right. And I think there's something to be said for like the fact that the longer you look at something, the easier it is to find things that you would have fixed or mm-hmm. changed or, you mm-hmm. know, Ryan and I just after four years re-recorded episode zero of this podcast mm, yeah. because <laughs> we listened back to it and we were like, this is a nightmare. And if this is the first thing people are here, like this is, I'm, I'm, I'm embarrassed. Right. Yep. Um, so, you know, it's one of those, you, you learn things over time and what you put out five years ago isn't necessarily reflective of who you are now. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you stare at something too long, you can find. <laughs> yeah. I tend to get blind to things when I stare at them too long. Like I have a hard mm-hmm. time seeing the, like, the nuances but like getting a bunch of people playing it like revealed a ton of stuff too and yeah Mm -hmm. you know helped us spot things that were missing like uh you know our friend ian pointed out that uh kids on bikes did not have uh bike creation (laughs) rules in it or any rules about bikes at all oh no oops and we're like oh yeah uh that makes a lot of sense we should try put those in uh so we released it as a free content uh friday thing yeah um yeah but i mean i'm gonna go the other direction as dud like it's to me, it stands up to other systems because it's exactly the system I wanted. Mm-hmm. Like mm-hmm. it does yeah. every single thing I want in an RPG, uh, like character and world creation. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. So like I'm really happy with what it does because it it checks all my boxes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love the the systems that include the the world creation uh as part of the session zero with the groups. Um I, I always say this. Uh, collaborative world building is the the golden bullet of getting people invested mm-hmm. in the game. Yep. Mm-hmm. Like if you, if you're collaborating together to piece together the setting that you're going to be playing in, you're everybody at the table has buy in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I mean, I think finding ways to do that even in a game that has an established setting, because I know even yeah. when I do run L five R conventions too, we do things to like make that world ours like we build our own clan we build our own island and you know like yeah. mm-hmm. things that can kind of bring everybody in and make them um invested in this thing that we have created together and so now it is ours and it's not just me showing up to hand you something yeah. um, it's a very different experience mm-hmm. yeah it really it really pulls you in and uh having that as part of character creation here and then having like the amount of potential with the relationship questions Mm -hmm. about how you can like it's a it's a d20 of questions worth of positive and negative and i don't know if my character really knows your other character uh questions and 
that there's so much possibility of creating like we proved we've made a nice tangled web of mm-hmm. relationships yeah. and it really fleshed out uh, not only our group and our connections, but also the world at the same time. Mm-hmm. I, I like these kind of games because I think this one and then when we did, um, who was the other one that we did the spotlight episode on? But they both had like these creating the rumors and then, you know, just like the one or two mm. little pieces about the school. You know, it's like we made up a sport um, and some landmarks and, you know, and it's like things that are not super intensive when you think of like world building, like let's create a political system mm-hmm. in it, you know, and it was like, mm, what is this weird sport that we all play? Yeah. Um, and how <laughs> yeah. much that can kind of influence the tone of the game. And, mm-hmm. you know, again, is another string to pull on later, a thing that can come up. Mm-hmm. Um, it's so much fun. I love, I love the, the world building together. And I'm always consistently surprised, like, when I run or play it, like, the same exact question can come up and have completely different yes. results. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, every time, like, totally different. Like, we put it in there that you can just skip a question if it comes up again, but, like, a lot of times they don't, and they'll just come up with an answer that blows me away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and well, and playing with, like, a different group of people every time and getting, you know, like, a totally different answers to those like rumors Mm -hmm. and and things like that just it's always phenomenal to me to see the amount of creativity that people have and bring to these kinds of things and the Mm -hmm. stuff that people come up with like off the cuff like always just blows my mind (laughs) like Mm -hmm. like, where did that come from (laughs) yeah and that's another thing i love about the collaboration process is you know i don't think we would have gotten into volleyball plus cooking competition no <laughs> um, if it wasn't for like well i was thinking volleyball well what do i mix that with and you're like well i was gonna say cooking competition and, right yeah with this of course it has to be that right right i still don't understand how that works but that's fine <laughs> we don't have to know how it works though that's no. the great thing right, uh-huh. right quidditch, exactly. quidditch doesn't make any sense at all no it's a that's stupid true. sport so no that's reason true. ours should right exactly you mean oh. the rest of this game doesn't matter it's just that one little thing that you have to get <laughs> yeah and in, in uh ready set serve like the most important thing is your final plating yeah right exactly right um <sighs> yeah and and i feel like some gms should just write a book instead of running games yep because like i've played in games where like the gm has such a strict idea for their thing like it's so railroady mm-hmm. and yeah you know when you start playing with like that you know, everyone building the world together, it just kind of takes that element out. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely pulls some of that ownership and, like, puts it in front of the group instead of being one person's mm-hmm. game. Yeah. All right. Uh, how does the process of character creation in this game reinforce the feel uh, and set expectations for play? Yeah. And that's something we've worked really hard on, I think, that, the Mm -hmm. you know the idea is that when you get into the game we're doing the same thing we were just doing there right the only Mm -hmm. difference is that sometimes we fail right and that the conflict is more in the moment rather than you know big sort of overview yeah but yeah the we want the the character creation the world building and all of this to be so player centered that it's the GM asking questions and then the players filling it in. Not, mm-hmm. you know, like John said, not like you're a character in my novel. You get to roll the die to, to determine whether your character does this or doesn't. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm telling the story here. You know, yeah. this is John and I were working on something the other day and said, like, boy, we'll really be in trouble if like our players figure out they could just take an improv class. Right. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like that's that's the vibe we're going for that. And the the character creation and world building sets that up. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I would agree. That sounds like what, you know, because what I can tell from having built characters is that it's it's going to be a pretty narrative heavy, relatively streamlined process Mm -hmm. to go through that it's going to be focused on the story that we're telling. And then, you know, some dice here and there to kind of answer the question of what happens when I Mm -hmm. do the thing. Um, but that it's, it's not, you know, it's not combat heavy. It's not, um, you know, not lots of like dungeon crawls and, you know, Mm -hmm. creatures Mm -hmm. to fight and things like that. It's, it's a lot more about the people. Mm -hmm. Just wait for kids in caves. (laughs) Kids in caves. (laughs) Kids in caves. That's the next one. Dudes in dungeons. (laughs) Dudes in dungeons. (laughs) So 
one thing we like to do here is look at the character sheet and talk about what it tells us about the game. So we talk about the, you know, the kind of design behind it, um, what things you really wanted to make sure were on the character sheets, um, you know, what the placement of things kind of means to you. Um, I know when we look at a sheet for something like D and D, there's lots of room for, you know, the, the feats and abilities and the weapons and the, you know, like that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, PBTA has the, has the book, um, where the whole inside is all your moves. So you can clearly see that that's the focus. Mm -hmm. Um, was there specific stuff that you wanted here or that you, you felt like, no, I definitely don't want that on the sheet. Um, I, I feel like it was pretty organic. Like we kind of just made the character sheets. Um, I think we did that really early in the design. Like when we were talking about, you know, the using the full set of dice for the stats, like we just started adding boxes for those. Mm -hmm. And they're like, oh, we need a backpack so people can just write what's in their backpack there. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and, and I think it all just kind of evolved very organically. And, you know, when we started talking about skills being more mechanical because we really didn't want to do like oh i have swimming so i get a plus one when swimming mm -hmm. like those uh... kind of things are yeah so <laughs> so boring we're like what if the you know the skills were kind of almost like a board game you know like a very mechanical thing like you can spend adversity points to do this or mm -hmm. you know you get these really nice things that you can trigger so you know, just adding in the boxes for those and, you know, letting players kind of fill stuff in themselves, like, made a lot of sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Rather I mean, and from there, that... from there, it's really just, you know, like, answering the things that, that we answered. It's a lot of, you know, like, word, line, um, mm -hmm. you know, name, grade, your broom, your wand, your backpack, your strengths. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. You know, so basically just running down the list of the things that we talked about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I like that there wasn't a lot of stuff to abstract. Um, I am not a fan of derived stats because they involve math mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and <laughs> thinking things through. Um, I liked that this was just, you know, like I pick this, so I write that down. <laughs> it's very simple. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we wanted to keep the math at, at just um, for the skill chats, like the, the GM sets the difficulty, you roll and figure if you're above or below and by how much. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like that's the sum total of the math in the game. Right. I love yeah. that. I'm here for it's, it. it. It's <laughs> interesting because um, I'm looking at the character sheet and it's, it's you know, as advertised for the game, it's very simplistic and it's uh, very straightforward and it's everything you need to know about your character uh, uh or everything that they have and and can kind of do but um one thing it also tells me um is i might need to have something for notes like a notebook or something like that because there's a lot going on mm -hmm. that involves my character that you can't account for on a character sheet right aside from just a big old blank note section which takes up a ton of space Mm -hmm. Well, even if we had a big notes section, like there's no way that we could have written all the stuff from the questions or anything. Mm -hmm. Like, right, have exactly. To write that down. Like, <laughs> um, like if you go to like a Powered by the Apocalypse game, like all of the playbooks have the questions kind of stamped on the sheet itself. But when you're working with, uh, you know, the variability of, you know, we're talking sixty potential questions for relationships per character mm -hmm. that are shared amongst all the characters. Um, and then the the tropes have their own personal questions. Uh, yeah. so that you don't want to create and kind of shoehorn yourself into. Well, here's like twenty nearly identical character sheets mm -hmm. that just right. have a difference between. Here's your personal questions. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and I think definitely it it makes sense to not have them on character sheets because those are shared questions between everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, you know, we answered those things and the stories are going to come up even though it's between um, Elvira mm -hmm. and Gar, you yeah. know? And so like, it doesn't make sense for me to write those questions on my sheet, but they still might relate to something that comes, you know, like that's mm -hmm. kind of a shared group experience. It's not about my character. Yeah. It also has the, uh, the thought in my head of uh, those questions can change. You know, we, we don't have to have this specific 20 questions if we don't want to. We could maybe swap out a couple of questions. We could 
take a question and alter it a bit. Uh, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. You know, the same thing we're kind of doing with all of this well, world building and relationship building uh, collaboratively, we can, we can uh, kind of gear it towards what we want to do at the table. Which well, is I really think there's cool. definitely room depending on your group for, you know, a player or a GM or somebody to mm-hmm. say like, hey, this is also a question we're going to add to the list. Right. Um, you know, like here's a, here's a fifth question I want everybody to answer. Right. Um, and, and so there's a lot of room for for that kind of stuff, too. Yeah. yeah. Um, that, you know, you don't you would end up with a 40 page character sheet and it's just not it's not yeah. great. In the adventure prompts in uh, Strange Adventures, volume one and volume two, we have a bunch of those for the pre-generated towns right like Mm -hmm. there are questions instead of the usual town creation questions you do this stuff Uh, but Mm. yeah there's also room to to do that with the inter-character questions too yeah yeah and we really wanted the game to be approachable to people who hadn't played rpgs before too so we didn't want the character sheet to feel overwhelming and like homework when you looked at it like yeah i mean if you looked at a second edition D &D character sheet oof I, I remember just feeling overwhelmed by it. All the spots the to day. write skills on a Heroes Unlimited character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we just wanted to, you know, we did want it to communicate that, you know, this wasn't going to be work. This was going to be fun and mm-hmm. it's right. going to be quick and you're not going to have to worry about a lot of extra stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. I think you did a great job. It's very clear what, you know, I don't think there was a point where I was like, I don't know where this goes or what to do with it. It was... Thank you. Mm-hmm. It was Thank good. You. And I, I felt like looking at the sheet kind of um, in a lot of cases negated the need to like look at the book. Um, I had to go there to look up some of the, you know, options for things. Mm-hmm. But it was like, OK, I, I know if I go down from the top to bottom how to build a character like mm-hmm. it's right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's own little guide. Mm-hmm. Well, now we're getting into one of the questions I like to ask, uh, especially designers. Uh, of the games uh, that we cover um what is uh what do you think is one of the biggest flaws of character creation uh in this system and what is one of the best parts um i think i kind of regret us pulling back on some of the things we originally wanted to do with the system and we put more of our um you know we talk about um safety tools and things like that but mm-hmm. like i really wish we'd done even more to piss off the people that don't like those things <laughs> 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 to be honest like mm-hmm. uh, yeah agreement on that yeah uh-huh. more more chair more thoughtfulness yeah building off of what john said i you know I, I think we have short stuff about what a uh you, you know what safety tools can look like but mm-hmm. one of the things that I've been getting interested in lately, um, like sort of right after Kids on Brooms was finalized, John and I both started getting really interested in how you build storytelling safety mechanics into the game itself rather than having it be... Oh, like an optional outside tool that you bring in. Right, like... Okay. So we're going to use the X card. Uh, Okay, cool. And the X card is great, right? Right. But rather than having it, having that happen, like building in ways for the storytelling to require that you use it and have it just feel like it's sort of a natural part of it. Right. So, Mm -hmm. you know, if you're going to enter into conflict with another character saying, um, the GM saying, are you good with this? Yes. Are you good with this? Yes. Right. Boom. It doesn't feel Mm -hmm. like, uh, make sure you see if somebody wants to tap the X card or anything like that. It's just, you're telling the story together. You're collaborating. Mm -hmm. Um, right and i think when you put it into the rules of the game and like make it part of it 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 sort of not totally negates obviously but like it does diminish the ability for people to opt out of doing that right whereas Mm -hmm. you know suggesting those things in the beginning people can like take them or leave them right yeah Um, it it, when you make it part of the mechanics it's like oh we're just playing the game and it's safe right yeah (laughs) Well, that's like um, a little bit of uh, like in Thirsty Sword Lesbians, there's like that smitten mechanic. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think we talked about this a little bit in the series. Um, the There was another uh, game that uh, uh, I think it was Senda and Phil uh, from Pandas Talking Games was working on, um, where you play as uh, this group of people that have messy relationships with one another. And uh, they have a smitten mechanic where it's like, you're not saying... Um, 
my character is going to, you know, flirt with your character or whatever, right? It's saying my character is smitten by this other character. Does that other character buy in or not, whether it's a GM NPC or mm-hmm. if it's another mm-hmm. player character? Um, and then it has to have that consent both ways for right. for that uh, that sort of role play to happen. Mm-hmm. Um, and I can see that working very well for for something like conflict and and all that sort of stuff and baking that right into the rules of like, hey, are, are you both OK with this thing happening? Mm-hmm. Uh, having a quick little check in. Right. doesn't break the story at all it doesn't break the immersion right. it's just hey are we being safe here yeah mm-hmm. okay let's yeah, go I mean, ahead i think when it becomes a thing where you say like okay conflict is about to happen and then you have to agree that conflict is about to happen for it to even like trigger initiative when it becomes a rule like that like there's no choice except to mm-hmm. have that yeah. discussion of like you can't like it just doesn't work ta-da problem solved mm-hmm. you right. know yeah i think that's that's something i would love to see in in more games um is is those safety tools kind of built in there because mm-hmm. then you can't end up with people who are like i don't need that mm-hmm. you do you do actually <laughs> <laughs> absolutely but i've been playing with the same rpg group for 45 years right <laughs> right i wonder why no one else wants to join your rpg group I know. Right. <laughs> yeah. um i mean are there things that you think that you've you've really just like nailed it i mean like john said this is close to exactly the game that i want to play yeah. so um I think so all I, of it then. Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically on the whole, I, mean, I, I think we nail it. I think a lot of good. games, I think a lot of games nail it. I think ours is one of the many games that nails it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Personally. Yeah. Yes. I mean, and that's awesome to hear, though, that like you really are happy with it. That mm-hmm. it's, you know, I think not enough people get to that point of like, this is, you know, yeah. the thing that I wanted to see. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I think sometimes we have to kind of sacrifice things here and there to to get them out into the world. And so it's always really good to hear people say like, no, this was the thing that I wanted to make. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and shout out to Hunters and Renegade for like giving us just so much creative freedom on this, right? That mm. there hasn't been, I don't think anything where they've said like, you can't do this. Um, oh, that's mm-hmm. awesome. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's been it's been great. They really yeah. have let us make the game that we wanted to make that we thought would be best. So that's very cool. Very cool. That's always mm-hmm. good to hear. It makes me so happy when people yeah. are like, I made this, I did it. Like, <laughs> <laughs> and you didn't have to self publish. I right. know. And you didn't have to self publish. Like, that's the real. <laughs> yeah, that's the real win. Uh huh. All right. Well, this is our favorite segment, the one we've been talking about this whole time. This is our fanfic segment where we. <laughs> Talk about playing the game. Um, yeah. What do we? What do we think? What ha- like? What kind of story are we throwing these characters into? Um, how do we think it would go for them? You know, the closest we come to playing a game. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, goodness, we've got, we've got a okay, we've got a you know a classic love triangle going right. on. Mm-hmm. Um, we've got a, almost inadvertently a, a best friend triangle thing going on uh, with jimmy elvira and, and amy catherine mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um because there's there was a lot of mentions of like jimmy's hanging out with elvira in this secret room there's yeah you know you know jimmy helping and and all this stuff so it's like you've got these like really uh emotion filled relationships uh already from the get-go yeah so that's that's really interesting to kind of pull off of. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a question, too, of, like, who is Amy Catherine if she's not Elvira's best friend? Right. Like, what's her, like, who is she by herself? Mm-hmm. Um, I really would like her to participate in um, this this cooking volleyball sport. <laughs> um, <laughs> ready, set, serve. Ready, set, serve. Um, because I, th- I think she could really, you know... Like that could be the place that she can shine and mm-hmm. maybe bring the team to the top. And maybe that's something that she can do without Elvira. Mm-hmm. Um, maybe Gar can be on the team too. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I was actually going to ask the question how Gar kind of got involved with us since like there's this kind of friendship between all three of us. Right. Yeah. 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 I don't know. I, 
I think realistically, if I were playing Gar, um, my friend who I game with weekly, uh, has a, you know, jokes with me that like when I play a character, no matter what they start out as, they wind up being me. Um, oh. <laughs> so, yeah. you know, I, I think if I did wind up playing Gar, he would sort of morph gradually. Like, I think I would have to give him a redemption arc, even if I'm not sure that people right. like him deserve redemption arcs. Right. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I think he was just that way. Like his parents were never around. They're always busy right. with this legal battle. And he's, yeah. you know, probably got like a series of nannies. Uh, yeah, I think I'd have to have that him. That he torments probably. Right. I think I'd have to have him suffer really, really badly before there was any sort of like redemptive potential there. But mm -hmm. I yeah, think we yeah. all want that. <laughs> we all, yep. yeah, we're all here <laughs> for the suffering. <laughs> right. Um, right, right. But yeah, I think. But I mean, before the suffering, there's got to be something because I. I know uh, Elvira's got this like um, hopeful optimism, like mm -hmm. underneath all of the the torment that she's been going through, and um, I think she would see something in Gar that even even Gar won't ever acknowledge, right? And mm -hmm. maybe maybe that might have pulled Gar a little bit into this uh, this trio mm -hmm. of sorts. Yeah, I think at the start, there'd be a lot of Gar saying, like, doing something nice and then insisting that there was an ulterior motive for it. And I yeah. think at first that would be true. And then I think there would be less and less room for him to say that there really was an ulterior motive. Um, but yeah, I, sort of on a meta thing, like, I always think that when you're playing, you have to think about, like, not, well, tell me why my character is hanging out with you but mm -hmm. coming up with reasons for the character to be there, right? Like, even if it's a series of, like, unexpected events to put him together with the other three, I would just lead into that, right? Like, yeah, he, they all are in the infirmary together, and he happens to be there when this thing happens. Like, cool, yeah, great. He's not running off. He's saying, well, I guess I'll stay. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I like that uh, the happenstance uh, gathering mm -hmm. uh, for for Gar's storyline because Gar feels very much like a uh, almost a loner type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, sure. Even though he, you know, has this big persona that you know everybody everybody quote unquote respects uh, to Gar because of who Gar is, where <laughs> Gar comes from, and mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. But then like. You know, that that doesn't equate to friendship. Right. right. You know, yeah, I like, think he totally tells himself that he's alone by choice, but mm -hmm. he's not. Right. Nobody's, yeah. nobody's he's as cool as I am. So yeah. right. I don't want to hang out with them. Right. right. Exactly. They can't keep uh, up with me. Right. But then, yeah. But then you find yourself in all these situations, right? Gar, Gar's just happens to be in the wrong place at the wrong time with these other three. Right. Uh, you know, whether whether Jimby's uh, bumbling us into potential trouble and somehow getting us out of it at the same time <laughs> or, or or my curse is is literally like you know haunting us as a group or whatever you know yeah yeah and we got to figure out what's up with meredith mm -hmm. right we do have to figure like, out that feels like does, does that, i feel like that's maybe like the place that this starts is like we have to figure out oh yeah i think i think yeah. we're deeply invested in that rumor and we're gonna oh yeah start right. poking our wands into it yeah absolutely Mm -hmm. Well, and I, I think maybe maybe Gar the, is going to yeah. start like interning mm -hmm. at the Blorp Corporation. Blorp right. Corp. Blorp Corp. <laughs> Blorp, Blorp, Blorp Corp. Corp. <laughs> and that is the name. It has to be. Well, and, yeah, and their website is blorpcorp.org. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they're a nonprofit? They are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Oh, Lord. Tenuously, but they're a nonprofit. Tenuous. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and we got to find the sock uh, closet again. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And and I I wonder if uh there is a link between uh you know Meredith and this like rumored, you know, the necropolis, I guess, beneath the school. Mm -hmm. Oh, I forgot about the the necromancy students. Yeah, oh. all, all, well I mean the necromancy classes are a known thing, but like yeah. You know, they have school projects uh, to raise right. the dead. Right. And uh, those school projects are, quote unquote, discarded afterwards. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, but, I mean, if you were a school that had to protect itself from who knows what, mm -hmm. 
uh, having an undead army uh, uh, on right, the ready would the be school, very yeah. would be very helpful. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. Are there special rules for getting into the necromancy classes? Do you have to like get a permission slip from a parent, or can you just like take those? <laughs> <laughs> Asking for a friend. Yeah. <laughs> I think it's just I assumed, would... right? Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. if you're going to the school, anything's fair game. Any yep. of the classes are fair game. Right. Yeah, right. Well, it's a it's a very prestigious yeah. order of mm-hmm. fantasticism. Yeah, I think I, we originally had like house creation as a thing, didn't we? Don't we it? did. Yeah, we did. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think that would play into like what classes you could take. But we decided to cut it because it wasn't. A, it was too uh, indicative of one very specific mm-hmm. uh, yeah. school, school yeah. story. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and we it, just found it was too restrictive and not fun. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I don't feel like it needs it. It also separated players, right? Like, there's no way mm-hmm. that all of our characters would be in the same house, however you split it up, unless it's right. random. Yeah. Um, and so then it's, it just complicated things, yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah I don't feel like it suffered for it. I wasn't, like, looking for it or anything. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. But, not, but now we can be our best selves at Poof. <laughs> at Poof. <laughs> <laughs> Who can work for Blorp Corp? <laughs> work for Blorp Corp. Mm-hmm. The Blorp, the Blorp Corp uh, secretly owns Poof. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so is Blorp Corp located then on this island in Lake Erie? Like, how I big is this island? No, it can't be on the island. No one it knows has where to be. Blorp Corp is. Yeah. Oh, you uh, work remotely? I, my internship was remote, yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. I mean, it's... Or it's yeah, just, I guess you could travel magically, yeah, probably. Yeah. And not know your location. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Okay. Where is Blorp Corp? Maybe it's in the Necropolis. Ooh. 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 Maybe all the secret ingredients the are secret necromancy. Ingredient? Yeah. Oh. It's people. <laughs> well, it's, oh, more, no. it's, it's former people. Okay. It's former, it's former, okay. former people. I, I love the description of uh, raised from the dead uh, people as former people. <laughs> former people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They're just former people. Uh, they're not Supposed using their bodies it. anymore. That's right. So, it's so their entire workforce is undead. Then, mm-hmm. uh, oh right. yeah, absolutely. Right. That's yeah. how you cut costs. Right. <laughs> right. It's true. Well, I did. I did go on an entirely other podcast and talk about the economics of necromancy and raising the undead. So you know, <laughs> skeleton <laughs> armies are cheap labor. You know that. Saying. You know that Amazon would if they could. Oh, well, right. Exactly. 100%. Exactly. <laughs> Oh, Blorp Corp, so why? <laughs> yep. Oh, goodness. Well, I mean, there's still yeah. a lot of questions that we have left to answer, but my goodness. I think uh, that we, that's, I a, think we've solved it. More than enough strings uh, that we yeah. could be pulling on mm-hmm. uh, for this fanfic. Definitely. Um, we probably would be here for another two hours if we. Also, there's a prom. <laughs> I just want to put that in there. There's a prom somewhere. Oh, 100%. Oh, gosh, yes, there sure. has to be okay. a prom. All right. So okay. that out there. Uh, magic prom, absolutely. <laughs> magic prom, check. Yeah. Well, um, let's get into our advancement segment <laughs> with all of that said. Um, and we will take it up a level. Take it up a level. Take it up a level. So in this segment, we like to talk about how character growth happens in the system. Um, first, we'll just talk about how does a character level up mm-hmm. in mechanically? in this game over the course of a campaign. Well, so originally in Kids on uh, Bites, we decided not to put one in purposely. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because we're like, I mean, if you think of like any movie like that or TV show or comic book series, like they don't really change that much between, you know, one year. And and I, as a kid, didn't change that much from year to year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then in this, we we, we kind of wanted to. So go ahead, Doug, you can talk about that. Yeah. And then in Teens in Space, we kind of went in the opposite direction, right? Like the space opera genre is like characters are getting better and better and better and better pretty quickly. Mm-hmm. So for here, we decided that, you know, in keeping with the school aspect of it, we were going to have uh, classes. And then as you practice magic using a particular stat, you can you can gradually work your way up in there, right? One of the strengths that you can take is, um, and we forgot to talk about this in the creation part, but uh, as upperclassmen, each of us would have a, um, one of our strengths would be skilled at a particular kind of magic mm. or trained in, I think is the um, 
yeah, trained in one particular type of magic that gives us plus one to all spells of that type. Okay. Um, but then we can also get to, with enough sort of checks in there, uh, which you would get at the end of a session, right? So I would say, uh, yeah, uh, Gar used really a lot of like fight magic in here. So he's going to take a check in that. Um, and then over time that would convert into him becoming studied in that, which gives him a plus three and then ultimately master of, which would give him a plus five. Oh, nice. Okay. But other than that, that's, that's pretty much it, right? We wanted to keep this focused on the way that your character narratively changes, right? The way that your, your mm -hmm. bonds with other characters change. Yeah. Um, uh, and that sort of thing. Now, yeah. now, does the mechanical uh, benefit represent something in the story, like uh, advancing your classes or, or anything like that? It, it's really just practice, right? That the more you practice a kind of magic, the better you're going to get at it. Okay. okay. So. Very cool. I like that. I like that it lines up. I always, I always prefer what? when narratively there's some kind of explanation mm -hmm. for, you know, I say uh -huh. like, it's no fun when you've been like doing this campaign through the desert and it's like, my next level is sailing. <laughs> like, <you> know, <laughs> why? Why? Because I've just um, been thinking about sailing. Just really yep. just like really thinking about boats. <laughs> yep. <laughs> um, I, wish, I wish we had a boat and, you know, maybe well, some water. Right. Exactly. That's what it was. It was like so parched that I thought about nothing but water for months. <laughs> uh -huh. And now so I know how to sail. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, I like when it's not a stretch. <laughs> mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, yeah, that, it seems like it's uh, it's got a nice uh, opening for some uh, advancing uh, for a, a little bit longer of a campaign. It doesn't kind of push you into like a one or two shot mm -hmm. um, or even, you know, maybe like a four shot or so. Um, it, it leaves room to have an ongoing thing for a while, you know, yeah. until you, until you graduate, mm -hmm. I'm sure. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it sounds like there is uh, some sort of ending point at the very least. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Which again, always prefer. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. <laughs> uh, well, is there anything else that you wanted to uh, point out before we, we wrapped up uh, the series, Doug or, or John? Mm, I don't think so. Doug, do you have anything? I think I'm good. Yeah. Um, very cool. Oh, well, I, I will. Uh, I do have to do one small plug here. Uh, yes. If you enjoy kids on brooms and you want to uh add another element to the game there is also uh a game called duel of wands which is a two-player card game of spell slinging at each other in the kids on brooms universe that you can integrate into the game uh, that's out from oh, Renegade. Nice. Uh, oh i saw that on instagram earlier when i was like scrolling through like i searched like the hashtag kids yeah. on brooms um, and it came up <laughs> It looked fun. It's really pretty art. Yeah. Heather did the art for that one. Um, and as always, she just, I mean, she knocks everything. She does out of art. <laughs> just, she's ridiculous. Um, yeah. So yeah. So shameless self promotion for that one. Yes. Uh, we'll yeah. put a link to it in the, in the description too. Awesome. In the show notes. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, well, Doug, Jonathan, thank you both so much for joining us to talk about Kids on Brooms. This was really fantastic. This was so much fun. Like, this is, what a good game. Thank you, <laughs> thank what thank a you good so game. much. And thank you for having us. Yeah, this was great. Yeah. This was as much fun as I've ever had on a podcast interview. So, oh, good. Yeah. Glad to hear it. 100%. <laughs> uh, well, can you both uh, remind everyone where they can find you online and the other things you're working on? True thing. Um, I am on Twitter at Doug Levandowski, L-E-V-A-N-D-O-W-S-K-I, uh, where I talk somewhat infrequently about my stuff. Um, I'm not a daily poster there, <laughs> even though I know for the algorithm I ought to be. But um, <laughs> John and I are working on a secret Kids On project. Uh, we are also working on Kids in Capes with four other folks um, who have just all so so awesome to work with mm -hmm. um and uh working on a game called home about surviving the night in a haunted house with yun Soon kim uh and i think that's everything that's been announced so yeah very cool we should just continue making jokes of other kids on things like i wanted to be like kids on planes yep like <laughs> yeah <laughs> Uh, that one's just gonna be snakes on planes, and you're just re right. role playing the snakes from the movie. Well, uh, but it's it's child snakes, though. I just want to be clear that like they are baby snakes. Yeah, they're baby snakes. <laughs> Banana wrote an adventure prompt for that in the free content Friday for 2020, I think. Ooh. Oh, nice. We're gonna have to go find all of these yeah. like bonus ones of like 
dads on mowers and snakes on a plane. And pretty soon I will write moms in Target. Mom, please, <laughs> Target, please do. I kind of yes. want to. I just, I have no idea like where to even start with that, but I kind of want to. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> Uh, and you can find me on Twitter at John Gilmore, J-O-N-G-I-L-M-O-U-R. Um, I also don't post there as much as I should, but I try to link projects and you know, have discussions from time to time. And um, if you want to check out things that I've done recently, Colab was just mm-hmm. on Kickstarter, and that'll be delivering later this year. Um, there should be a link to pre-order it on the Kickstarter page. Um, and I've got a few other projects uh, coming up that hopefully I'll be able to talk more about soon. Very awesome. cool. As well as the stuff Doug talked about. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you both so much for sitting down with us. This was like I had a blast. This was so fun. Um, and thank you to everyone for tuning in. Call to action. Yeah, like that. I love the Kids On series uh, of games uh, so much that uh, for what you can create in it, like I, I came into these series not really knowing much about what the games are about aside from, oh, you can do Stranger Things or the Goonies or, or whatever, right? Mm-hmm. But it's it's a lot more malleable yeah. than that. Um, like you've got the the relationship questions, the the world building, uh, You you've got... Uh, like like very malleable character creation options in there as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, I really was I was really uncertain. Like I will be out there and say it. I was really uncertain going into these ones because I knew about kids on bikes, and mm-hmm. I knew it was based off of Stranger Things, which has mm-hmm. such strong D and D vibes that I was yeah. like, why did you make a game based off a show that's heavily influenced by another game? <laughs> like, that seems too meta. And then, uh-huh. you know, I'm like, and then there's a Magical Kids one that I'm always like, I don't want to play Harry Potter. Uh-huh. Like, I just, it, it always goes there. I know when we did our Starcrossed episodes, I very distinctly said, I don't want this to be Hogwarts. Mm. Um, and so I was really just like, not sure what to expect going into this. Yeah. Um, and I think we do get a little, we, we got into that a little bit in this episode about mm-hmm you know, how it's not Hogwarts. Um, and I was, I was just really surprised at, um, how sleek the mechanics were and how Mm -hmm. thoughtful a lot of it was considering the source of the ideas and things. It was just, it was really cool. It was really cool. I came away with a a much greater appreciation for it than I thought I would. Absolutely. Um, and, and I know we probably could have gone so many more places with the fanfic, um, oh, for there sure. So, but we, there are so time. many threads. <laughs> time there are so many threads. Like we did a full relationship, uh, you know, web, uh, yeah. positive, negative uh, character relationships between every character pairing, and mm-hmm. uh, yeah, it was uh, it was fantastic, and it created so much story that you can pull on. So yeah, uh, very very impressed by this whole this whole game and yeah. Uh, in the series and I'm really looking forward to the next one. Yeah. I can't wait to see what they do with like Mm -hmm. kids and capes and some of their other projects. Like it's just, it is really interesting because they're all genres that you're like, we already have games for that, but Uh they're really doing things differently. Absolutely. Um, It's cool. It's very cool. Mm -hmm. Um, so before we let you go to the outtakes (laughs) announcements or calls (laughs) to action, um, you know, we'll try and keep it shorter maybe than we did earlier. Absolutely. Um, I won't. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Probably. Uh, so check out our brand new TikTok page at Character Creation Cast on TikTok. Uh, I'm going to be keeping on posting those teasers there. But like, uh, what else do you want to see? Let us know. Uh, maybe we'll do something else. Uh, so ideas are nice. You can hit us up on Twitter at Creation Cast or on Discord at discord.charactercreationcast.com. Please check out the trans rights bundle on itch. Um, It's going to be ending fairly soon, but it's such a good deal. Um, It is a suggested donation of $5. It helps kids that are suffering down in Texas after some really damaging anti-trans legislation. Um, So please check that out. Consider giving more than the minimum amount if you're able to um, in order to help people out. But it is like 500 games. So, uh, you know, it's a great deal. It's a great deal. (laughs) And if you have some time after all of that, uh, consider leaving a rating and review for our podcast. Um, you know, Stitcher doesn't do reviews anymore, but we still have Apple Podcasts, which I know is a pain for some people. Um, 
and we also have pod chaser uh which is much less of a pain for everybody mm -hmm. um and uh there's also uh, places like podcast addict on android uh that you can leave reviews uh, and that's kind of it there, you can leave some... one on our facebook page we do have a pa facebook page too yeah, for you... our our show mm -hmm. um, and you can leave reviews there as well um yeah, but yeah there's not there's not too many review places out there, but if you leave a review somewhere like very niche, let us know mm -hmm. and uh, we'll read it as well uh, on on the show. Uh, we're out of reviews again, so uh, yeah. we would love to get more to read on the next episodes. Yeah, and definitely if you've left us one and we haven't read it, like please let us know too, because I think we've we've tried to catch them all from all of the places and um, yeah. aggregate them. But if for some reason we've missed yours, please let us know because we, we do want to read them. Mm -hmm. um, uh, we have... Uh, we will have at some point soon, maybe by the time this comes out, I don't know, mm -hmm. um, an episode on the One Shot Network Patreon feed where I make characters with my kids using Weird Scouts RPG. You can get access to that by becoming a patron at the $5 up level at patreon.com slash one shot podcast. We are also going to be adding new shirts to the network's T Public store. Uh, yeah. So if you're looking for some C3 merch, we will have you covered there. We'll put a link Absolutely. to that in the show notes. But I'm excited for some of the designs that I've been playing around with. Yeah, it's, it's good about fun. time. It's good uh, fun. I, I, I'm very excited for it. I know. Four years in, we really needed to. Um, <laughs> we, and we definitely still want to commission an artist for some stuff. It's just been, uh, you know, like a question of finding the finances and stuff because yep. uh, we don't get paid to make this show absolutely so. <laughs> and we want to pay an artist what they're worth so absolutely um so please check that out and also check out our uh, bonus episode from last week about yaziba's bed and breakfast a slice of life rpg that is currently crowdfunding uh they're crowdfunding on uh, indiegogo uh, not kickstarter so check them out there uh we'll have a link in the show notes uh but please listen to that episode uh, and if you enjoy what you hear, uh, check out their Indiegogo page. We really had a fantastic discussion about uh, playing shared characters and what exactly makes something an RPG. Um, uh, we were really excited for the game and hope you'll be too. Uh, there's going to be a link to that campaign in our show notes. That's it for March episodes. Um, yeah. We cannot wait for you to join us for April as we celebrate four years of character creation. Four cast. years. Four years. Four more years uh, by covering a truly amazing game. Mm -hmm. um, you will not want to miss those episodes. <laughs> they are excellent. Uh -huh. I know Ryan hasn't edited them yet, but I was there when we recorded them and they were yep. <laughs> excellent. <laughs> so <Yes. laughs> please don't miss it um, and join us in celebrating four years. Absolutely. Until then, take care of yourselves, drink some water, get some rest, get vaccinated, stay safe, keep making those amazing people. We'll see you next time. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts, this show, and even our press kit. Character Creation Cast can also be found on Twitter at CreationCast or on our Discord server at discord.charactercreationcast.com. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune or online at lordneptune.com. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. Further information for the game systems used and today's guests can be found in the show notes. If you'd like to leave us a rating or review, we have links to various review platforms out there, including Apple Podcasts, in our show notes. Also, check the show notes for links to our other projects. 
thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. We gotta read some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Neo Scum. Neo Scum is a narrative comedy podcast featuring five Chicago improvisers antagonizing their way through the role playing classic Shadowrun. It follows a group of misfits and outsiders. Z, the acerbic cyber troublemaker. Pox, the candy junkie klepto from across the pond. Tech Wizard, the public access actor with a petulant thirst for adventure. And Dak Rambo, the nastiest trucker this side of the Robo Mason Dixon. Join the irascible Neo Scum crew on a puerile rockin' road trip through a weirdo world of tomorrow, doling out street justice to every deeb they encounter, whether they deserve it or not. E- Recording. There we go. Oh, it looks... Uh, I thought we were going to start on one. Oh, that's... I think I need to start over. That's fine. It's close enough. One's close enough. Okay. We'll, we'll make it work. Uh, it looks different. This is my first time recording in the new version of Audacity, and it's weirding me out because it looks different. I don't like change, so I would. It doesn't prefer look too different. <laughs> it just adds a little line at the top. It just. Oh. It's. Mm. <laughs> I don't know. like the little level line or one of the other ones. Just, yeah, I haven't used it in like a year or two. Yeah, it's uh, there's like a little uh line that has the clip name on it, and uh, oh, yeah. so you can actually like when you're editing, you can move those clips around and put in different audio files as clips, and oh, wow. and and it works. Uh, just like almost every other editing program there is. I know I just got mad at printers for not changing over several <laughs> years, but I would also like other things to not change. Like I've been overdue for a new phone for like a year and a half and there's cracks in the screen and like the touch screen's starting to get funky. But like, I don't want to, <laughs> like the world is so unstable right now. And the idea of having to learn a new interface <laughs> on a phone is like too much for me. It's uh-huh. too much. Too much. Too much. <laughs> Can't do it. I forgot to take my Adderall before we started, so oh. I had to quick. <laughs> you're, you're still there. We go now. We can hear you. Oh, I had to move my mic closer. So I forgot to take my Adderall before we started, and was like, "Oh, oh. if this is going to be successful, we're going to need to go ahead and do that." <laughs> <laughs> Priorities. Um, <laughs> sorry about that. No words. Just saying. Yeah. You get. You get. See, no, that's not true. We don't even get one swear word. Ryan doesn't let us. So I know. <laughs> <laughs> it'll it'll get an ah language uh bleep bleep to it. Yep. It's fine. Yep. Nate says um, that now when I swear. <laughs> like if I swear in front of my son, he now uses Ryan's ah language. Uh, which is the I, filter I, that I, he puts in the podcast episodes. It's great. great. It's great. I, I'm glad that my I My son is filtering son. me. <laughs> yep. It's fine. I did it. I think I did it like half a second. I did a clicky. Not even half a second too late. You're the one that says clicky. How can you do it late? I was a little confused because I'm on one screen. Um, I don't know why. But my waveforms look nice. So that's the important part. I'm writing myself a little post-it note that says audacity update. Audacity I'm going to stick update. it on my monitor and then promptly ignore it. It's not bad. It's it's just got a little bar at the top. It makes yeah. it look more modular. Oh, yeah. See, I wasn't even talking about, like, the the difference thing. It's just that that's, like, the ADHD thing is that, like, I'll see the note, and then eventually if the note is there too long, it becomes part of the decor. Yep. And I don't see it anymore. I understand that. I had to, like, move around the sticky note Mm -hmm. to remind myself uh, to give the kids their medications because... Like, I got so used to seeing it. Mm -hmm. Like, I put it on the door thinking when we walk out the door, it'll be there. And I'll see, like, before we walk out the door, like, oh, no, stop. Mm -hmm. There's a train. Um, And, you know, it worked like that for, like, three days. Yeah. And I was so used to it. You just got to, every time you use the note, you move it somewhere else. Right, right. 
I actually like put the medication in the drawer in the kitchen, um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right where the like sandwich bags and stuff are. So I see the medication when I'm making sandwiches, yeah. I'm making lunches. It's right there. So that's what you got to do. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Still doesn't always help, but you know, you do what you can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, account for as much as possible. Right, right. Sometimes the kids remind me they're yeah, okay. Like there you go. Sunday, I wanted them to do something, and Nate goes, "Yeah, you're gonna need to medicate me for that." <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, "Thank you for knowing yourself. I will do that." <laughs> uh huh. Uh huh. I was like, "Good reminder. I'm gonna go take mine too." <laughs> yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, well, in three weeks or so, construction might begin for my new studio. Ooh. So I'm very excited for that. And um, I have no idea what I'm going to do with my desk in the meantime. Um, probably the other side of the basement and hope for the best. Yeah. That sounds fun. How are you going to work through like that? Uh, work on the other side of the basement and hope for the best. Oh, I see. I see. Okay. <laughs> that, was, that was the whole plan. I thought there was like a step two there. Just, that, was the whole, that was the whole thing. Okay. Pretty much it. Yep. <laughs> Uh, I really would like to put up my, my curtains, uh, slash my blankets hanging from the ceiling, but mm-hmm. I cannot in that room. Unfortunately, we have to clear out space in this room down here, uh, so they can have construction materials and enough room to put up the walls, mm. um, because they need to lay the walls down and then push them upwards yeah. into position and blah, blah, yeah, blah. Like some like cool barn raising. Like, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So they got to do that. I've and built a basement before. I know. <laughs> I have actually. Oh, wow. (laughs) Like twice, but I'm not obviously by myself, but um, my dad is extremely handy. And so we have, he, he finishes his own basements. Oh, that's amazing. Um, Yeah, he did. He built like a full, like he fully finished our our basement at our last house, had like a bathroom and a bedroom and a fireplace and like. That's amazing. The whole shebang. It always blows me away uh, that people can do that. I know. I, mean, it's I like, know. I wish well, I knew how. You look around and it's like, this all got created somehow. Yeah. I, think <laughs> I, I wish I knew how. And I feel like if somebody like walked me through, I could roughly get it. The, the part that I could not get is that like measure twice, cut once thing. Yeah. I would be like measure 12 times, cut like mm, like roughly 47 yeah. times because I'm bad at math. Yeah. Um, it would end up being math. like four times expen- as expensive for me because I would just like mess it up so much. Yep. You know? Ah, I get that. Construction has maths, is what I'm saying. Well, right. Well, so does architecture. So right, right. Yeah, I get that. I understand. I, that. Yeah, like I'm fine, like doing the stuff with my hand, like, but I need somebody to like right math at it for me. Yeah. Like, so like I, I have no problem like doing all the pay, like putting all the stuff up and you know nailing things and hammering and with the tools and the whatnot. But with the tools and the thing the, and with the, the tools and the whatnot, um, <laughs> I just can't. I can't math it out. No, that's fine. Yeah, just have somebody else math it for you, and then then you can do everything. Right, exactly. Yeah, you're all set. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I'm looking forward to a new studio because then I can get consistent waveforms. Because um, mm. right now, I, I peak whenever I laugh real hard. Oh. So, like, I'm going through these edits, and every single time I, I see myself laugh, I know it's going to crackle a little bit. So then, yeah, then it is that just because it's too echoey in there? Or I, don't know like... if it's, but I think it's just because I, I've had to like turn down the gain and compensate by getting close to the mic. Yeah. And then when I'm too close to the mic in conversation and I laugh real loud, it just peaks just during Yeah. So those... now you got to like learn to lean back when you laugh. Lean back and laugh. Uh, yeah. Lean into it. Yeah. Do that old lean and laugh. Lean and laugh. LOL. Mm-hmm. Wait, LOL. 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 Wow. Um, but yeah, it's uh, it's annoying. But I've got this cool little thing where I can uh, just go into the waveform highlight that little peak and de decrackle it. Nice. And it just gets rid of it. So fancy. I know. Uh, if only I got paid uh, for all this work so I could actually like afford the tools that I bought. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got to fix that. I know. Someday. Yeah. So cold open. Five, yeah. six minutes into it. I, I heard of that. Um, you know, we get most of our outtakes from these cold opens. Oh, now. I'm well aware. <laughs> so, hello, outtakes. I was just trying to think of anything else that I want to put in here. Mm, I don't think so. Okay. Oh, should we put in here that you made us a TikTok now? 
Oh, yeah. The tic tac tic tac Hey, get out of the closet. Do you no. check out the spotlight? Back another thing. Speaking of Patreon, blah. Uh, one last announcement. Eh. Quit looking for trouble, would you? Talk. I'm looking for something Patreon. to get into. Hi. Hi. Hello. You're a very beautiful dog. Yeah. Yeah, just the prettiest dog ever. Yeah. Prettiest dog to ever live. Oh, huh? yeah. Yeah, and these people on the podcast will never know because they can't see you. No. No. And they're definitely not supposed to hear you. Unless they follow your uh, your Twitter. It's true. Unless they follow me on Twitter or Instagram, then they know how beautiful you are. Yeah. It's very beautiful. More chin scratches? <laughs> Every time I start to move my hand away, she moves her head, so it's, like, back underneath it. She likes to do it while I'm trying to play video games, too. Mm -hmm. She likes to try and get her nose under my fingers, and I'm like, I need those buttons. <laughs> Peggy, it's a boss fight. Hmm. We like to interrupt the boss fights, yeah. Yeah. The boss fight. Peggy is the final boss. Oh, there you go. One last thing. One more thing before I go. I would love to figure out what else to do with that tiktok page but i know right i mean one day we might think of something clever but we could do like mini fanfics mm -hmm. just like mini <laughs> uh we could do we could do uh do your dog doing uh character creation yeah we could yeah and then use your hands have to, like Peggy roll the play. dice and write RPGs. down stuff on character sheets that'd be adorable Look at how big she is. Peggy. It might make me finally get TikTok. Like and subscribe. Is that what they say? As, as the kids say. <laughs> Be sure to smash that like button or something. I don't know. But whatever the youths say. Okay. I think we got it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Ten minutes in and we're ready to start. Yeah. All right. Y'all side over there? Um, probably. My dog's walking toward the door, so I think she's going to start uh, banging on the door handle here shortly. Okay. Nope, get off my desk. No, she just wants your soda. Get off my desk. Okay, soda's not for doggos. Mm -mm. Okay, I will sit here and pet you if that will keep you quiet. There you go. Okay. All right, here comes Except the silence. <laughs> <laughs> Did you hear that? No. Oh, you probably can't because the microphone. She's letting out like the loudest snorts. Like, <laughs> I mean, it sounds like she's snoring. <laughs> oh, there you go. Okay, we're going to do our best. She's playing fetch with herself right now. All right, so. we'll see what happens. Yeah, we'll, we'll try it. Well, here we go. Okay. Welcome to the first episode of Series 48. <laughs> yeah, I, I, okay, here, we'll try that again. Um... So, yeah, that's I, I like Girl Scout cookies if you like them, too. Ow, my dog just straight up bit me. <laughs> Come on, Peggy. She was trying to play with a toy, and then she bit me. Ow. Oh, Peggy. Uh, okay. All the, <laughs> I did all read these that. Ethics. <laughs> oh. I said, you know, I tell everybody that, like, that's the fun of ADHD is that life is full of surprises, uh -huh. even from yourself. That's very true. <laughs> Ah, oh, she really got me. Holy crap. Okay. Okay. <laughs> we were playing tug of war and she like went to like grab it because I was like, if I'm playing with her, she'll be quiet. Kind of. Yeah. All right. Scrolling down. Reading the rest of this. Ooh. He did it. In oh, under 30 minutes. 26 <laughs> minutes. <laughs> so Ryan, what got you into podcasting? Um, I was uh, listening to podcasts back in 2017, I think it was. I first started listening to podcasts, um, decided, hey, I'll start listening to stuff about role playing games because I haven't been able to play for ages because, you know, friends don't live near me anymore. Yeah. And I was like, well, what what podcasts are out there? So I, I started listening to uh, DM's Block, uh, which is like based around advice for dungeon masters and stuff. <laughs> And then they were having issues with their website because I wanted more information on some stuff. I do web design as well. Mm. 
So, so I I reached out to them and said, hey, do you need any help? And they're like, yeah, we have no idea what we're doing because <laughs> the guy that set all of that up uh, is no longer with the show. Uh, and so I became their webmaster. Okay. Um, and then they asked me to uh, judge the second season of the Geek Wars podcast, mm-hmm. uh, which is like a big trivia show for just geeky trivia. Okay. And... So I did the first episode with just a, a junky headset, like a USB headset, like no uh, sound bleed protection at all and mm-hmm. a sure. really bad microphone. And uh, and I said, you know, th- there's going to be quite a few episodes of this. I should probably upgrade to a better mic because when I do things, I want to do them right. Mm-hmm. So even if it, it was just going to be this like 10 episode season of guest judging on a, a, a show, I wanted to have good audio quality. Mm-hmm. Well, that led me down a rabbit hole. And <laughs> so I, listening to more podcasts and then uh, wanted to create this podcast and, and it just kind of spiraled from there. Cool. So now, now I do this with Amelia, you know, once or twice a month we do recordings. And then uh, I edit this, and then I've gone from editing just this to actually editing actual plays and audio dramas cool. as oh, well. Wow. So I, I do like full soundscapes, full sound design, music placement, um, you know, music and sound alterations, and all that sort of fun stuff. Cool. Oh, trying to eat some Thin Mints. I haven't had any yet. I have been so good. They have been in my house for like four days. I haven't had any Thin Mints yet. Oh, is this your first Thin Mint indulgence? I ate some oh, of the lemonades, but I didn't eat any Thin Mints. The kids ate like a bunch, but um, <laughs> I had so many boxes of Thin Mints in my house and I, I haven't eaten any. Wow. Their, their new French toast ones are so good. Oh, yeah. The toast I do like those. or whatever. I am so sad that they got rid of the thanks a lot. Is that the, the s'mores one? That are the, no, the ones that are just a shortbread with mm-hmm. chocolate on the bottom. Oh, yeah. They got rid of those a while ago. I know. I'm so sad. Everybody was mad about them getting rid of the s'mores ones this year to replace them with those, like, brownie, the Adventure Fools. Mm-hmm. The brownie oh, the ones, ones with, like, the, garbage. They have, like, a brownie and, like, a salted caramel in the middle. They're amazing. Yeah. They're- I had very low expectations for those. Mm-hmm. But then when I had one, I was like, these are actually way better than they ought to be. They're too they are. crunchy. They need to be chewed. If they were chewy, mm-hmm. they'd be out of this world. Well, see, yeah. that's, that's the weird thing is if I, th- I, I'm thinking the opposite. If they were chewy, mm. it would lose it'd be too, some it'd be of it. If too chewy? If it's too I, chewy, yeah, 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 I need to try them now that they're like room temperature. We got a box. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, like as a, here's the new cookie. Everybody gets a box. Um, but they were like handing them out from outside. So it was very mm-hmm. cold and we did not want to wait. So <laughs> they were the caramel in the center was pretty hard. So you when got, I tried you got them. the uh the cold caramel taste. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There there is a flavor to like fresh out of the freezer uh that like permeates uh, whatever flavor of Girl Scout cookie mm. uh you're gonna be eating. Well this was not freezer flavor, this was outside Wisconsin flavor. So but it's, well, I don't see, I don't hear the difference. <laughs> <laughs> Touche. Are we all set to uh, continue on with the questions? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I think so. Excellent. I have now finished (laughs) chewing, so yes, we can go ahead. I don't think I have. So good. (laughs) (laughs) All right, and now we can go ahead and stop these recordings here. Yeah. Yeah, my dog's really loud back there. I was just trying to see if it showed up in the waveforms, but it doesn't. So. um. Itty bitty. yeah. Squeaking sound. It's, it's not just kind of like <laughs> it's not even squeaky. It's just like you know, it's like a Nash, rubber. Nashy. Yeah. There you go. Anyway, oh. oh, this is like. Hold on, I gotta move you over here, and then move this over here because otherwise my my microphone stand is Ooh. in the way. What was it? Something legs. I yeah. Remember. Ugh. Long legs, or no, it wasn't long legs, though. It was, <laughs> it was something else. 
Because long legs would be like normally sexy. It was something that was like sexy. Well, like not. Was it the huge legs? No, it's huge legs. I don't remember. <laughs> the huge legs. Huge legs. We have it on audio somewhere. Yeah, so. somewhere. Let me know. Yeah, yeah. I'll try to In find it. In a couple it. weeks. Let me know yeah. what that is. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was part of the Jeff and John recording, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because yeah. I, I like, for some reason, I want to say it starts with a D because that's like in my, like, but I don't know what it would be. Yeah. So, do you know how that, like, you're like, I'm sure that it sounds like, and then you find out what the word is, and it's like not that at all. Nothing remotely yeah. like it. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah, my brain put those together. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. Okay. Yeah, uh, basement's almost done. Uh, I have to take this down, this, this bookshelf, mm -hmm. before uh, the next recording. So, next recording, there's just going to be, I guess, a blanket behind me. I don't know. Maybe a I basement? A basement? No, not a basement. I'll have to have blankets hanging from the rafters still because uh, it, it's it's still going to be in my blanket fort for the recording on Sunday. Soundproofing. Um, but the outside outside of the blanket fort, there will be walls up. Like nice. the, the, I don't know what you call them. The frames? Yeah, like the wood part? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So the wood part's being done this the week. The studs. As well as the uh, electrical wiring. Very cool. So I'm excited. Very, very cool. Uh, one step closer. Yeah. All okay, right. Podcast. Recording uh, the cold open and then I right. could go on a walk. I will do a five count and then we'll do it. I almost said then we'll sing, but we're not going to sing. <laughs> Let's sing the cold open. Sing the cold open. Welcome uh, that, to for the April. second episode. <laughs> It's a song et I wrote. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. <laughs> Let's just do this. All right. Ready? Yep. All right. I'm going to do the recap quick before I forget. <laughs> Last time on Character Creation Cast, we created a magic school called Poof with headmistress Meredith Bleep Blorp trying to keep things... <laughs> I know, I, don't, I know I I am not part of these recaps, but I forgot we called it poof. Yep. Poof. <laughs> Ed Mistress Meredith a, Meredith Bleep Blorp. Meredith Bleep Blorp. <laughs> we let you go for the week. Oh, I guess. I guess. <laughs> I was like waiting for you to, because I'm like, I said some stuff. You said, I said, stuff. I said things about game. <laughs> 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 Which, by the way, is what I do through all of the episodes. So I don't know why you got to put it in the cold open to like things about, What's say things about game. It's called action. It's like, like one didn't of those, I already do four it's, hours it's of say things about of, game? He, yeah, it's one of those friendly, like, hey, welcome to our new space. Sit down. We're going to talk about the how we and like it. Would you it. like to see a menu? It's a nice little segue. Here's a little uh, here's a little taste of what <laughs> we enjoyed from this episode. Are... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Introduce you into a little bit of a relationship leading questions and, yeah. right. you know. Sure. Might as well. So, now, do you say that because you know that you can't leave one in Podcast Addict on Apple? Uh, there is no Podcast Addict on Apple. Uh, yeah, there is because I was just using it. There earlier. is now? Yeah. No, you're blowing my mind. Yeah. What? Oh, no, you know what? No, there's not. You're right. Oh. It's po Pocket Casts is the one that I use. Oh, yeah, that's different. That's right. You're can't right. leave reviews on Pocket Casts. That's can right. you? I don't know. Oh, okay. I don't know. I usually try to leave them on iTunes because that's the, like, the easiest for everybody. Yeah. Or I just yell into the void of Twitter. Like, hey, Twitter. <laughs> uh huh. <laughs> Look at this show. Oi, Twitter. Oi, Twitter. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Twitter. Okay. Uh, yeah. So, so most of that's going to get cut out, but. <laughs> right. So just to just to refresh, uh, after I interrupted Ryan very rudely, and you don't hear any of it because it cuts it all out. Um. You cannot leave reviews on Stitcher. Stitcher pretended they were sad. I don't know if they are. You can still leave reviews on Apple Podcasts, which is apparently easy if you have um, something with iOS, but maybe not as easy on a computer because it always wants you to update. There's also Podchaser, which you can get to from the internet. Also Podcast Addict if you're on Android, but apparently not on iPhone. Did everybody follow along? There will be a test afterwards. Uh, I have a question. 
Yeah. Uh, you, no further in the questions. Back. No further questions. Well, it's not a question. I have another question. Okay. Why not? Unclear. <laughs> Okay. Uh, I'm going to say science. <laughs> hey. That's what I usually tell my son when he says, why? I don't know, science. It's true. I mean, technically, technically always true. Okay. If people are still here, uh, we do have a <laughs> review to read. <laughs> we're, uh, we're in O-takes territory it was right like now. a really long day, and I'm just... Like, I thought IT accidentally deleted all my emails. None of oh, my sent boy. items are showing up for the last week. Um, Come back next week as we die fully. Oh, gosh, that's not right. Come back, come back again next week. Please, next week. please come back <laughs> come, next week. Come back next week. Like, come please. back. We did it. I mean, just barely. Just barely. Oh, stopping that audio. Nailed it. Again. Perfect. Every time. I'm getting pretty good at this. Oh, it I took was, four years. <laughs> <laughs> I was very frightened last episode that I had started the recording um, and I was using the wrong source, possibly. Oh. Like the waveforms look perfectly fine. They right. But normal. as we've learned, that doesn't mean anything. <laughs> it doesn't mean anything when I've literally just installed a new version of Audacity like mm. two days ago. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm in opening uh, Audacity like every three minutes yeah. and verifying I'm still recording. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, I always I had, keep a like, little thing in the background. That whole thing with my microphone, like where my waveforms looked fine, but then Ryan went to edit it and it had just like cut off like the whole top Love of the all of the waveforms. Yeah. So um, like it cut off everything 8,000 hertz and above. Yep. Oh, wow. As yep. if it was recording through Zoom or whatever. Yeah. I don't know. Because I think over Zoom uh, and most of the uh, recording or th- things for video conferencing, they they cut off those upper frequencies to lower the the bandwidth mm-hmm. of the sound coming through. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So if you pull that in from there, it it's just very weird. it's very tinny, right? Yeah. Um, but I found this program that you can throw the waveforms at, and it does this like studio sound sort of thing, and it mm-hmm. adds that back in somehow. Oh wow! Yeah. Through like artificial intelligence. Yeah, it sounds uh, okay. Like I can still hear it in some places, obviously, and especially yeah. like. That recording is just, you know, bad it's definitely anyway. Not perfect, it's but yeah. With the children and <laughs> children don't have good mic etiquette. Yep. Um, I, I was trying to hope in that you re recorded it and improvised all your lines. Oh no, right. they were. Mm-hmm. Ah. Yep. No, I kinda want to do a podcast that's just that. Right. You just like cut out and... one person's audio yeah. and <laughs> Oh no. Oh, that would that would be very awkward at points. It would be, but kind of fun. <laughs> And, that's and now it. we can stop our recordings. We can stop them. We again. did it. Cool. Yay. Er. Yeah, clickies. Yeah, clickies. Yeah, clickies. <laughs> look at look how, how good I clickied. Uh, the clicky, the clacky, it's uh, coming backy. Did it go somewhere to begin with? <laughs> I, I'm not really sure. Okay. We're burning it back. Burning back the click clack. Uh, from wherever it went. From wherever it went. Wherever it went. Exactly. Oh my gosh, can you imagine starting an episode without a clicky? No, I cannot. It blows my mind. Remember yeah. we used to not do that, though? It hurts. Uh, yeah, I know, because I am currently edit re-editing those ones. Yeah. <laughs> the original yeah. three series. Call to which action. Yeah, like that. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh. Stop of the podcast.